Is the Ryzen 7 9700X really that bad of a CPU? Well, today we're gonna paint, I guess, a little bit of a different picture to what you may have read or seen out there on the internet already, because there was something as soon as I started testing that I noticed gave some very weird results. And that was the particular BIOS that we were using in relation to this CPU right here. In fact, between the latest BIOS that came out from ASRock on our test motherboard here, that's the B650E Tai Chi Lite, and the BIOS that was released from ASRock on day one, the actual day one release BIOS from ASRock had better results than the latest BIOS that they released, which AMD liked to implement the Agisa updates and that can change performance sometimes for the better, but in this case, I believe sometimes for the worst. Now the ASRock X670 Pro RS motherboard that we used in Japan when we did the Ryzen 5 9600X made it so that I was kind of somewhere in the middle. I thought the Ryzen 9000 series was a mediocre launch. The performance was okay, but the price was actually not that great, especially looking at the value of some of the 7000 series CPUs that exist out there in the moment. But again, some of that doesn't actually come down to just AMD's fault itself. They can't control economic conditions and they have to move old stock, aka the Ryzen 7000 series, to make way for the 9000 series. But back to those differences with the BIOS updates. This may indeed explain why on day one, a lot of tech reviewers and outlets got some really bad results and then they gave the 9700X a terrible review and instead of jumping on the bus with the 9700X, they simply grabbed this poor sucker and pretended to wave down the bus but then at the last minute said, no, nah, I'm not catching the bus and then just chucked this 9700X and AMD right under that bus, squishing the living but with that intro and some of the testing out of the way, let's get into now the best case scenario for at least what I've tested here, the 9700X versus the 7700X versus the 7800X 3D, right after today's video sponsor. If you wanna get rid of this annoying activate Windows message, then today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, has you covered for as little as 15 US dollars after you enter that coupon code BFTYC, you can cop yourself a legit single end user license today. Also works for Windows 11 Pro 2. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. And in today's video, we are using the B650E Tai Chi Lite, the 6000 megahertz CL28, which we've clocked a little bit higher to 6200 megahertz CL28, and also bumping the Infinity Fabric a little bit higher on all three CPUs to the same levels. And we're also using a 1000 watt power supply and the RTX 4090, which we are keeping at a static fan speed of 60%. So essentially we are keeping the results consistent as well as using the best performing BIOS that I did from the testing here. Now let's of course start off with the gaming benchmark numbers here with a title called Age of Mythology Retold, which I'm actually looking forward to having some free time and playing through this game because it looks absolutely amazing. But that said, it can also stress a CPU, especially when you clock it to the mythical settings that would be something indicative of ultra high settings. And here is where the Ryzen 7 9700X scored actually some impressive numbers here, scoring over 150 average FPS with some very good 0.1% lows that are coming closer to that of the 7800X3D and the Ryzen 7 7700X, at least in this particular benchmark, isn't doing so well. And so that is a big difference between these two architectures that the 7800X3D is kind of in ways I feel blanketing a little bit because of course it's such a good CPU with that extra cash on board. But some of these other results will also show that the 0.1% lows as well as the minimum FPS is always consistently higher on the 9700X than it is on the 7700X. Take for instance, Baldur's Gate 3. Here's another example where we're scoring not just higher average FPS, but a higher 0.1% low. And then the X3D of course coming out well on top. But then we move over now to Gears of War 5, a game that definitely has been stirring up a bit of controversy, especially when it comes to Windows testing, which I will be doing another video on Windows 10 versus 11. 23H2 versus 24H2, so stay tuned for that video. But what we saw here with Gears 5 at 1080p, 
maximum settings. I even changed some settings to insane, which is an extra unlock that you can do just to make sure that I'm really stressing things out and making sure that there's no dynamic settings that could affect FPS. And here's where the 9700X actually put on a really impressive display, at least versus the 7700X, scoring around 259 average FPS versus 224. And then the X3D, of course, coming out a little bit ahead of the 9700X. But one thing to note here was when we did the newer BIOS, the new update, was that we actually saw a drop in performance here. So again, that could explain why there wasn't such a big difference in these numbers between the 7700X and the 9700X when you saw those day one reviews. I definitely know one thing, and I'm not saying this because I'm sponsored by ASRock. I know their BIOS team is always on the ball and they're always getting settings right, which for me, when I'm testing things, it's always good to know that the BIOS isn't letting me down at least I can cross-reference it with a different BIOS and use the best BIOS to get the best performance numbers for this particular CPU, which I know in the future, and we're kind of interluding here with some of the gaming benchmarks, but I guess I'm just talking to you guys. I want to ramble a bit about this CPU. Maybe in the future, you'll see these videos come out from other people where it's like this crazy title. Oh my God, this changes everything. The 9700X receives an amazing, crazy boost, where it's really just a BIOS update and the particular motherboard manufacturer finally tuning the 9700X the way it should be. But let's move on now to Hogwarts Legacy. We're at 1080p high settings. With the 4090, we banked another dub here on the 9700X, scoring 141 average FPS versus 126. Quite a significant uplift, but one thing that was interesting to see in this benchmark was the 0.1% lows were the highest on the 9700X versus both the 7700X and the 7800X 3D. Though, on now to Cyberpunk 2077, and here is where it's falling in the middle of the pack, both in minimum FPS and average FPS. And then on to the last title here, Far Cry 6, where we got an average FPS of around 245 versus 212. So again, over a 10% uplift on average FPS, which is what we're seeing in a lot of these titles here. But the minimum FPS scored a huge, significant uplift. And then that's getting closer to that of the 7800X3D, which of course scored a big uplift in average FPS over the 9700X. So let's look at those gaming benchmarks quickly and then we'll move on to some productivity numbers. But what we're seeing here is a CPU that actually does impress in terms of giving you better gaming performance over the 7700X. But also here's the next part, it's going to impress with the productivity numbers. And here's where we did five different benchmarks. We'll start off with Chaos V-Ray and we were scoring a quite a big uplift over the 7700X, which if you notice the 7800X 3D now starts to fall a little bit behind. That's because it's got that X3D cache which does use up more power, which because of that, it now means that the CPU has to be clocked at lower speeds, AKA more efficient sweet spot for the clock speeds of the CPU in order to account for that extra cache on board. So we're gonna see lower numbers on the X3D for these productivity benchmarks. But moving through the Chaos Corona benchmark here, we've got a 7.6 million versus a 6.7 versus a 6.2. Then onto Geekbench 6, you're getting a decent uplift in single thread as well as multi-thread performance. But then we're looking at 7-zip and here is where the average rating actually scored identical on the 7700X versus the 9700X. So this was, I guess, if you're looking to uh, decompress and compress things, you're essentially gonna get better value on a 7000 series chip, especially if you can find one on sale. Let's move on to that last rendering benchmark here, Cinebench R23, and here is where we've got 21,216 points versus the high 19,000s on the 9700X versus the low 18,000s on the 7800X 3D. But one thing to point out here is the power consumption whilst we're doing this Cinebench benchmark. Here's where the 7700X uses over 135 watts. It goes up to 95 degrees. And from the wall, you're gonna be paying for this difference at least versus the 9700X and the 7800X 3D, where they scored a lot more conservative values in this benchmark, and in particular with the 9700X, we're getting more performance to the tune of an extra 1300 points or so. The single third performance here scored over a 10% boost. Then when we move into the gaming power consumption results, here's where we're seeing roughly all these three CPUs are in the same ballpark. They're not really standing out in terms of running too hot, running too much power, and also from the wall though, you'll see that the results are skewed 
in favor of the 7700X. That's simply because it's not producing as much FPS. In other words, it's not stressing the RTX 4090 as hard. So the 4090 will use less power on the 7700X. But we're looking at the power consumption numbers for gaming. There wasn't a big uh, efficiency boost. In fact, it lost out clearly to efficiency versus the 7800X3D. Though before we move on to that conclusion, let's talk about undervolting, which is something that I always like to do here. And if you want to go with the curve optimizer in the BIOS, you can extract a little bit of extra performance as well as a little bit of a power drop and one degree lower on the temperatures. And just like the 7000 series, you can benefit from undervolting via the curve optimizer, which is really easy. Though your mileage may vary, you only might get minus 10 steps or you can get all the way up to minus 30 steps, which is what this 9700X was able to do here. Though with all the numbers out of the way, it's time to talk about the 9700X and who is this CPU going to be for? And to be fair, it's, as I said in the 9600X review, the one thing that is not doing it for me with the 9000 series is simply the value. And I guess in ways that isn't, are wholly to blame on AMD, right? <laughs> the economy right now is terrible. Everyone I speak to is telling me the business isn't going so well, not just in tech or selling PCs or anything like that. It's just not moving as well as say even last year, which was already kind of bad versus the year before. So in other words, AMD's having a hard time competing with selling their old stock of the Ryzen 7000. The Ryzen 7000 series, a lot of the times is going to make for a much better pick. Especially if we look at the 7500F, if you're a budget gamer, you can get six cores, 12 threads for a little over a hundred bucks. And coupled with a very inexpensive motherboard, great power consumption results. And then if you want the absolute best gaming performance, as well as slightly lower power consumption, you can go for the 7800X3D, which is currently cheaper at street prices than the 9700X is. So it's kind of a hard sell for gamers, that's for sure. But here's where if we look at the productivity numbers, especially the said power consumption for those productivity numbers, you can see there is some merit to the 9700X, and that is it's going to be one of the fastest eight cores out there at the moment. It's actually a really snappy experience, which is something I'm gonna do a dedicated video on later, and it makes for a great hybrid CPU, which you can do your work on and then game on with absolutely fine FPS. In fact, the FPS is really nice, and I wouldn't have a problem gaming at all these FPS figures I showed you here today. It's just that, of course, when we get back to the value, a lot of people want to see the best value, especially in these tough economic times. And with all that out of the way, I hope you enjoyed today's review of the Ryzen 7 9700X. Do let us know in the comment section below what you think about this CPU and also what you think about my remarks in relation to the 9700X specifically. Do you think what I said was bang on or do you differ? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. But on that note, if you stayed this far and you wanna see the 9950X review as soon as that drops as well as some Windows testing, Windows 10 versus 11, and then the latest update on Windows 11, then don't forget to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.